In this module, we will cover cold water immersion, and this is the short version. In the next 10 minutes, we will discuss pathophysiology of cold water immersion victim, how to survive if you do fall in in cold water, and what are some of the rescue and treatment strategies. So let's start off with thermoregulation, and there are three components to this. Thermoregulation is the mechanism of maintaining the core temperature at around 37 degrees Celsius. So hypothalamus is your thermostat, and it gets information from mainly your skin um, and also some deep tissue and other parts of the brain about the temperature status. Vasomotor is another part that becomes important in thermoregulation, and that's your basic constriction and dilatation, depending on the ambient temperature and the temperature of your peripheries and also of your core body. And then shivering is very important. Uh, it's involuntary muscle contraction to generate heat and stay at core temperature. Which one of these drinks would you give to your hypothermic patient? A cold Coca-Cola or a hot sugarless tea? The answer is actually cold Coca-Cola, as it will provide calories to generate heat when shivering. Your body tries to maintain a homeostasis of temperature keeping the core temperature at a balance between heat loss and heat gain. So on the left hand side of this balance, you can see the ways that your body can lose heat and that's through evaporation, radiation, conduction, and convection. All of these are covered in your hypothermia module. On the other hand, the body gains heat by heat production, exercise, shivering, and external heat application. So how long does it take to develop hypothermia after falling into 50 Fahrenheit degree water? That's about 10 degrees Celsius. It actually takes much longer than you'd think, probably more than 30 minutes depending on various factors that we will discuss later. But here's just an overview. There, there are four stages of cold water immersion. Within the first minute you get cold shock response. In the next 5 to 15 minutes, you'll get cold incapacitation, and then 30 minutes and greater, you'll start developing significant hypothermia. And uh, there's also circumrescue collapse that we will discuss in this lecture. So what are the ways to die in cold water at 0 to 2 minutes? And I mentioned this already, it's cold shock response. And uh, basically, rapid skin cooling initiates an immediate gasp response, an inability to control one's breath, and hyperventilation. So if your head is submerged underwater when you fall in, and the first thing is you're going to gasp, you're going to get that water in your airway. And all of this depends on an extent and the rate of skin cooling. So some of the options you have to prevent this is to keep your head above the water when you fall in, uh, enter slowly into the water and wear thermal protection. Also, hyperventilation, as you might know, may cause you to faint and drown. <laughs> so don't panic and keep calm as much as you can. Increased cardiac work becomes important in the first uh, zero to two minutes, uh, but basically constricted blood vessels causes the heart to work harder, which can cause cardiac arrest in victims with underlying heart disease. So here is a picture of a polar plunge in the Greenland, and this is a So say you survived your cold shock response and were able to control your breathing. So what is another way to die in cold water past 2 minutes and up to 15 minutes? This is called cold incapacitation, and basically you get local cooling of nerves and muscle fibers, and you're not able to swim anymore, and you can't hold on to things and you can't perform survival skills. This becomes especially important if you are not using personal flotation device, as at this point, nothing is going to hold you up once your muscles stop working. 
So, and then say you survived that part or you had your personal flotation device on. And uh, what happens past 30 minutes? That's when hypothermia sets in. And um, it takes longer than 30 minutes to actually become unconscious from hypothermia. That means your core body temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius. And if you had dust stay above the water, so if you do have your personal flotation device, your cooling to cardiac arrest actually takes uh, 90 minutes to 180 minutes depending on the water temperature. What is another way to die in cold water? This is termed circumrescue collapse. And uh, this refers to syncope or death just before, during, or after rescue, sometimes up to 24 hours after rescue. Basically, once you're rescued, you develop mental relaxation that decreases stress hormones, and in turn, this decreases your blood pressure, which might cause a syncope, and uh, if you're still in water, it might cause you to drown. Another explanation is uh, that decrease in arterial pressure actually decreases the blood flow to your coronary arteries, arteries contributing to cardiac ischemia, which can precipitate ventricular fibrillation and uh, a mass of MI. The last likely explanation is that circumrescue collapse is secondary to afterdrop. So what are some other variables that determine your survival in a cold water immersion situation? First of all, let's talk about body morphology. So uh, kids and tall skinny adults will become hypothermic faster as they have greater body surface area to mass ratio. Also people with large, larger BMIs will last longer as fat is a good insulator. Thermal protection is important if you have a dry suit on Obviously, you have more time um, to develop hypothermia and for cold incapacitation to sit in. Swimming ability becomes important. Uh, also, the water temperature and the sea stage. So uh, if it's a stormy weather with really cold uh, temperatures, your chances of survival are much less. The extent of the immersion, so are you partially immersed or fully immersed? The proximity to a boat or shore or the proximity of rescue personnel to help you. And uh, very important uh, is uh, to note if you have PFD, personal flotation device, and signaling devices. PFD is of utmost importance uh, once you go past the incapacitation stage as it will keep your airway out of the water and give you a higher chance of survival by um, getting rescued by rescue personnel. So what is it that you should do if you fall in the cold water? You should follow the 1101 principle. So what is the 1101 principle? You've got 1 minute to get breathing under control. You have 10 minutes of meaningful movement and you have 1 hour before you become unconscious due to hypothermia. These are obviously all estimates. So in the first one minute, you have cold shock response. So how do you deal with this? What are some actions you can take to minimize it? First of all, try to not panic. If you have to enter the water and it wasn't an accident, you should enter slowly. So do not jump in head first into cold water. Keep your head out of the water and try to control your breathing as much as possible. So never dive head first into cold water. One more time. What can you do in the next 10 minutes after you controlled your breathing and before cold incapacitation sets in. You have 10 minutes to self-rescue. There is a self-rescue technique if you fell in uh, in ice 
Um, so basically you want to get your arms out and hold on to the edge of the ice and then you kick your, kick your feet to horizontal position so you can distribute your weight more evenly and kick and pull until and slide along the ice. Do not send as uh, this will cause you to fall through again. So how can you delay the onset of hypothermia? There are a few strategies. If you're by yourself, you should resume a help position. Help stands uh, for heat escape lessening position in which the arms are pressed against the chest while the legs are pressed together. And uh, this requires you wearing a PFD. As remember, you are going to be cold and capacitated and not be able to move anything. You should also huddle if you are in a group with other people and try to minimize exposure to cold water. So if you can get a part of your body out of the water, you should do it. Once again, I'm going to emphasize the importance of wearing a PFD, personal flotation device, to keep your airway out of the water. So here are the examples of the help and huddle. Here are some general rescue and management principles of a patient that was a victim of cold water immersion. First of all, remember scene safety. Do not become a victim yourself. Secondly, remember how to take care of a hypothermic, hypothermic patient. Keep them horizontal and handle them gently to not precipitate dysrhythmias. Also perform prolonged pulse check as these patients are often profoundly hypo, uh, bradycardic. Cold water immersion uh, victim can also be a drowning victim. So maintain airway and perform rescue breaths as needed. Also do not overlook trauma. Uh, boating accidents can result in cold water immersion injury. Um, so look for trauma and remember to take care of C-spine. Here are the references for this talk. Please check out beyondcoldwaterbootcamp.com. This is a great resource. And uh, a lot of the information in this short talk were taken straight, was taken straight from uh, this website. Uh, there are also great informative videos uh, of uh, actual volunteers jumping into cold water and experiencing cold shock and cold incapacitation.